Hello, child of God. Just like most of you, I have viewed hundreds of YouTube videos on gardening. Some of those I have watched several times because they were made by knowledgeable, experienced professionals and dedicated teachers. I modify what I've learned from the teachers in many states to work for me here in the mountains. But recently I had questions that no one that I had studied had answers. This year I have hundreds of tree cuttings that I am rooting over the winter that I will pot up in the late spring. If you saw my other videos, then you will know that I usually let the cutting soak up some sugar water first. Then I add a rooting hormone before I put them in the soil. The professional nurserymen that I have viewed rightly tell us not to use fertilizer for rooting. It will burn and kill the roots. And of course, keep the new rooting system out of the direct sunlight because it also will burn and kill the roots. But we all know that there is a time in the life of the cutting that we need to add fertilizer or the cutting will just die of exhaustion after it's used up all of its internal sugars. I searched the internet for answers of when, where, and how much, and what fertilizer. I'm sure that you'll not be surprised to know that not every professional study you find online is unbiased. Some of the studies may be biased by the same corporation that is paying for that study to be made. For example, if the United States of Monsanto was paying for the plant rooting study, GMOs and Roundup would be the scientifically proven answer to benefit the study. I know that sounds a little sarcastic, but it makes my point. When you read these research studies online, no matter whom is doing the research, Someone is paying for that study. My opinion is that there is a lot more honesty on YouTube than reading scientific studies from certain colleges and foundations. But there still remains my question of when, how, where, and what to fertilize the cuttings, and many of the so-called scientific studies might not be trustworthy. So how do I determine the best answer for this particular question? Well, we are spiritual persons, and we live in our bodies made from dirt. And obviously, God gave us brain and we're expected to use them. God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Our communication with God is usually in the spirit, and it is analyzed in our brain. I pray and ask God answers to my sincere questions, and my spirit receives the answer from his spirit. Wow! Almighty God is my heavenly Father and is responding to me. While I was reading the scientific studies, God's peace came over me on one particular study. One of the ways the Lord indicates the right answer is that the peace of God comes upon you. And in my last video, I discussed being checked in the Spirit, and the peace of God is similar to the very opposite of being checked in the Spirit. Learn to be sensitive to His Spirit. First, you acknowledge God and pray for the answer. And there are many ways that He could answer you, but my answer came by the peace of Christ. I'm not quoting the study, but I am summarizing what I gleaned from the study study that answered my particular question. My cutting should be fertilizer with a water-soluble nitrogen fertilizer only after the roots are visible. Fertilizer does not help the cutting to root until the roots actually emerge from the plant. I should check for the roots roughly 10 or 12 weeks after planting the cuttings in a rooting medium. Premature fertilizer reduces root growth. The study preferred 180 pounds per acre of nitrogen. I'm not even going to try to work that out per cutting since I have an excellent hydroponic fertilizer, high in nitrogen, that I have used for a couple of years with great success. But I am developing a method of fertilizing at the right time, just like the professional nurserymen do. You know, I talk to God just about every day, and I try to remain teachable and humble. I know I do not have a prophet in my pocket. He's not just my minion that I can call on to answer my questions. He's Almighty God, and I do not always get what I want when I want it. The point is that I do not treat him as an answer machine, but questions and answers are part of our fellowship. Let's learn to be sensitive to his spirit. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him.
But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. Child of God, I love to work in my garden, and especially in the greenhouse. But spending time there with Almighty God, and learning to learn from Him, has made it an amazing spiritual experience. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and will not follow the voice of a stranger. Almighty God is the one that chose the environment of the garden for fellowship, and speaking from my own experience, it is a low-stress environment where I am spiritually happy and relaxed, and for me, it is an excellent environment to hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have any gardening questions, talk to the Lord first, and listen for yourself to what He says. And I'll see you on the next video. May God bless you. Bye-bye.